The India-Canada relationship has hit rock bottom and Canada is getting the Pakistan treatment from New Delhi. India has recalled six of its diplomats from Canada and expelled six Canadian diplomats posted in India. It's like Canada is the new Pakistan, shielding terrorists and drawing sharp criticism from India, not to mention the expulsion of diplomats. And there's only one person to blame for all of this. Canada's Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau. His political agenda and myopia have driven this relationship to the ground. He finally spoke last night and only made the situation worse. Listen to this. They met with Indian officials to share RCMP evidence which concluded six agents of the government of India are persons of interest in criminal activities. And despite repeated requests to the government of India, it has decided not to cooperate. With those remarks, Trudeau added fuel to the fire. Indian diplomats are protected under the Vienna Convention. The Canadian Prime Minister basically called them criminals. His foreign minister went one step further. Her name is Melanie Jolie. She talked about imposing economic sanctions on India. I'll tell you the exact words that she used. Everything is on the table. For the record, India is the fifth largest economy in the world. Canada ranks at number 10, so they should save the sanctions rhetoric for someone else. Meanwhile, Trudeau is getting political support from all sides, including Khalistani leader Jagmeet Singh. They were coalition partners, but Jagmeet dumped Trudeau recently. Now he has called for sanctions against India and a ban on the RSS in Canada. The RSS is the ideological mentor of India's ruling party, the BJP. Jagmeet Singh says ban them in Canada. The country's opposition leader, Pierre Polievre, has also supported Justin Trudeau and called for action. India has issued a strong rebuttal to Trudeau's remarks. It has termed Canada's allegations, and I'm quoting from the statement, vague, not true, absurd, and preposterous imputations. In fact, let me quote from the statement further. Canadian Prime Minister Trudeau's press conference yesterday was the same old Trudeau saying the same old things for the same old reasons. This is what New Delhi was referring to. As the RCMP commissioner stated earlier, they have clear and compelling evidence that agents of the government of India have engaged in and continue to engage in activities that pose a significant threat to public safety. This includes clandestine information gathering techniques, coercive behavior targeting South Asian Canadians, and involvement in over a dozen threatening and violent acts, including murder. So what is Trudeau talking about? The killing of Hardeep Singh Nijar, a Khalistani terrorist. He was killed in Canada last year. The Trudeau government says it has proof against Indian diplomats that they are involved in the murder of terrorist Nijar, specifically India's top diplomat in Canada, High Commissioner Sanjay Kumar Verma. Canada labelled him and five other Indian diplomats as persons of interest in their investigation. Yesterday, Canadian police held a press conference to share this so-called evidence. Now, you would imagine after so much controversy, they would come with solid proof, maybe wiretaps or intercepts or photographs. Let me tell you, they offered none of it. Instead, they went on a long rant of allegations. They accused Indian diplomats of involvement in homicides, extortion and violent acts. These are the words they used, homicides, extortion and violent acts. It's as far-fetched as it gets. And then they struck a self-goal. Listen to this exchange. You just heard today that India is targeting, uh, using, using the terminology I'll share, the South Asian diaspora. Um, to be more specific, is the main target of transnational repression or foreign interference and organized crime, including what we just heard, extortions, uh, actually the Sikh Canadian community? Mm -hmm. so, so, yes, I mean, it, it is targeting the South Asian community, but we, what we've seen is there's, there's specific targeting of uh, pro um, uh elements in Canada or members of the pro khalistan movement. And just for the follow-up, but we're talking about um, extortions, uh, organized crime being used, um, you know, we've within the community have seen that folks have been targeting, uh, targeted in these uh, incidents are not just people that have been are linked to uh, the Khalsa movement or the Sikh self-determination movement 
Uh, are you able to share that the uh, transnational repression occurring right now is, is going beyond just six connected to the Khalistan movement in some shape or form? So it, just in order to, to preserve the integrity of the investigations that are being conducted by our uh, police of jurisdiction partners, I won't be providing any further details. That's practically an admission. Canada is shielding Khalistanis. Their police is saying it on record. These are Khalistanis who openly call for the breakup of India. These are Khalistanis who celebrate violence against Indian politicians and threaten Indian diplomats. The Canadian police confirmed that Canada is picking a fight with India to protect the very same Khalistanis. Meanwhile, after this blunder, Trudeau is hoping that his allies will stick with him. He's said to have spoken to the US and the UK. Reports say the US is supporting him. But New Zealand is skeptical. Their deputy prime minister issued a statement. His name is Winston Peters. He said these charges, if proven, would be very concerning. Meanwhile, the security of Indian diplomats is being stepped up. High Commissioner Verma and his five colleagues will return to India by the end of this week. They are being given enhanced protection. They've also received threats from Khalistanis. It's a full-blown security and political crisis, and it's entirely of Justin Trudeau's making. First Post decodes the U.S. election, explains how America chooses its president, your primer on the race to the White House, everything you need to know about how America votes, and its global implications. U.S. Election Explained, every Monday and Thursday only on First Post.